Resident Evil 3 Remake is short. My first run through lasted around four hours and two minutes. The reason I lead with that is because it seems to be the main topic of conversation surrounding this game. Read through Reddit or Twitter and you'll see this singular topic dominate the discussion. And I find it really interesting because I think it's not actually the singular issue here. Resident Evil 3 has some real problems and in this video we're going to go through all of them. But to surmise my overall opinion of the game, I'd have to say that it felt as though Resident Evil 3 was a DLC or expansion that was unjustifiably made into a $60 release. There is a real lack of original ideas here. I'm glad that they're giving this game a fresh coat of paint, don't get me wrong, and it is a beautiful coat of paint at that. The animations are great, the graphics are fantastic, the sound design is phenomenal, and it really does seem that for some people on the development team, this was a passion project. However, that doesn't change the fact that the offering here is pretty sparse. When we compare Final Fantasy VII Remake to the Resident Evil 3 Remake, it's night and day. And bear in mind, the Final Fantasy VII Remake, it's technically only part of the original. Now, to me, perception is more important important than reality in most things. It doesn't matter what the development team was trying to do, what matters is what the players perceive them as trying to do. I think it very possible and even likely that the development team behind Resident Evil 3 was trying to deliver a lean, mean experience that was reminiscent of the original and brought some modern day graphics and flair to the presentation. The problem is that to players, it really does come off as a quick cash grab, especially when you consider the multiplayer. You see, they added a multiplayer segment to the game to help justify the cost, but I'm not sure that this is enough, especially considering the fact that I've tried to use this mode multiple times, and every single attempt ends in crashing or in such long matchmaking times that it's basically unplayable. The concept is cool enough. One player's the mastermind and all of the other players are trying to escape from a dungeon of sorts. The mastermind can add traps, spawn enemies, or more generally just try to outsmart the survivors. These types of asymmetric multiplayer games can be a lot of fun. For instance, I really enjoyed Friday the 13th, especially after all of the patches. It's a great party game. And don't get me wrong, these types of games can get really old really quickly. Even a game like Friday the 13th can only be played for a couple of hours before it starts to get really old and boring. And good lord, if you happen to encounter a herd of 12 year olds that are trying to troll you into a mental collapse, that two hours becomes 10 minutes pretty quickly. But I think my biggest problem with this multiplayer mode is that it seems so lazily done. There's very little content here, but they took the time and put the effort into creating an eShop where you can purchase what are effectively loot boxes using their own proprietary currency. These loot boxes include cosmetics, but also gameplay affecting perks, tools, and upgrades. As of the time of the recording of this video, you can't actually buy the currency outright, at least not as far as I was able to find, which may at first seem like a good thing. However, you are able to buy boosters with real money that greatly expedite the rate at which you earn this in-game currency to purchase more of these loot boxes. It's just a more roundabout way of having an in-game currency and loot boxes, except that they don't even do you the courtesy of allowing you to front the money and not waste all of this time sitting in lobbies waiting for a game to start. I mean, seriously, I was trying to record footage to demonstrate this point, but more specifically to have B-roll of the multiplayer gameplay. However, the match took so long to load and to find other players that I eventually gave up. Like right here, I'm the one in five. After 10 minutes, they weren't able to find a single player to match me with to get that to two out of five. At this rate, it would have taken almost an hour in order to fill up my party, and even then, it probably would have taken longer. Now, I could be wrong, and this multiplayer could be really good, and it takes 20 hours for it to really reach its peak, but the point is that I haven't been able to try it adequately because practically no one plays it or the technical issues are so massive that it can't match players together, in which case, what's the point of having the multiplayer there in the first place? But unfortunately, this isn't where the technical issues end within Resident Evil 3. There were many times throughout my four hour run of the campaign where I was left confused and sometimes thankful that the game glitched in the way that it did. For instance, there's this time when I was fighting with Nemesis, racing through an alleyway trying to get to safety. After a hectic scramble, I found myself at the door ready to enter. However, Nemesis was on my tail reaching for me. I hit X to trigger the door animation so that I could enter, but at this precise moment, Nemesis grabs me and it ended up in what can only be described as a clunking and confusing 
confusing display of poorly optimized AI. Either the game should have known that I was opening the door and Nemesis shouldn't have been able to grab me, or I shouldn't have been able to open the door at all and instead should have been grabbed by Nemesis, at which point I likely would have seen a game over screen. Regardless, it shouldn't have ended the way it did, where I got through the door and Nemesis was helpless, and I was both thankful and frustrated as the game allowed me to escape so easily. It was a weird case where I was both happy and frustrated that the game glitched in the way that it did. It helped me get through a stressful situation, but I couldn't help but feel as though I had just cheated the system. And I think it goes without saying, but if a game makes the player feel guilty for doing nothing wrong, something has probably gone wrong within the game itself. These things are especially important in a horror game where game over screens should, in my opinion, be few and far between. Every time you see one, it pulls you out of the immersive state you were hopefully in prior to that game over screen. A game that's doing its job should make sure Sure that all damage inflicted is fair and immersion breaking screens are minimized. Now don't get me wrong, this has been an issue in what are now the last three Resident Evil games that have released. All of these games feature clunky inventory systems which are designed to make the player feel uncomfortable. Furthermore, they give the players weapons to defend themselves in the face of danger, however they make sure that these weapons are extremely frustrating and difficult to use effectively. And while I like this design choice, and I think that it forces the player into a further stressed state, which is a good thing in these games, I think it can often be a laurel upon which the developers can rest, resulting in poorly optimized and clunky gameplay overall. If your game feels disjointed and rough, to put it simply, it had better be for a damn good reason. Unfortunately, I don't think Resident Evil 3 fixes any of these frustrations I've held for the two titles previous. The inventory management is still needlessly complicated and ceases to feel like a realistic encumbrance and rather more like an intentional ploy by the designers to lengthen game time. If you're playing normally, chances are you're not going to need to use the storage and safe zones very much at all. However, on harder difficulties, you'll find yourself consistently and constantly frustrated with how unfair the item drops and placement can be. And I'm sure that this is partially my own predisposition towards games such as these. Some people may not mind Resident Evil's trademark clunky delivery, and like I said previously, I understand the design choice of using the grid-based minimalistic inventory. It increases the player's stress level in moments where such anxiety is key and fulfills the purpose of a horror game at the end of the day, to raise a player's heart rate and stress level. However, when we compare Resident Evil 3 to Resident Evil 7, a game just a few years old, there was one massive change that I absolutely despise. The game pauses when you open the inventory. This completely defeats the purpose of the inventory system in the way that it was designed. This leads me to the conclusion that the designers of Resident Evil 3 Remake didn't and or don't understand the mechanisms with which they're designing the game itself. Resident Evil 7 was fantastic because there was never any respite. Anytime you open the inventory, you had to balance that with the very real threat of an enemy coming up and sneaking up on you while you were in your inventory menu. When you were in a boss fight, you couldn't just pause the game, get a moment of relief, search through your inventory, try to craft a healing item, and then continue. Just like in real life, you wouldn't be able to do that in a stressful situation. There is no break in real life. And so, having the game effectively never pause raises the stress levels and fulfills the purpose of a horror game even more. The fact that while you're playing through Resident Evil 3 Remake on normal difficulty, the game pauses when you pull open your inventory, I think shows that the developers completely miss the mark. Listen, I like horror games, I like scary movies, I even like horror novels, but I'm sure that we've all felt the frustration of unrealistic characters doing stupid things in the face of an impending danger, and this is a constant problem in Resident Evil 3, because Jill Valentine seems to take stupid decisions as a challenge to outdo Darwin Award winners. Not again. It's me he's after. Hey. I'll buy you some time. Hey, wait. Don't, 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 don't. No! Damn it. Am I supposed to let the princess die? Is that what you want? Well, maybe the princess shouldn't be a damsel and she could save herself. Come on, you ah! She could save herself.
What the hell are you doing? This moment is made all the more hilarious when you consider how rah rah my feminist badass they wanted Jill to be. I don't care who does stupid stuff like this. It's stupid and it makes me root for the bad guys because the character's stupidity is so utterly amazing that it begs the only reward for which it is worthy. Failure and death. If a butch, viking, heterosexual behemoth made this same decision, I would laugh in the same way, because it's stupid. But okay, here's the thing. Resident Evil 3 is fun. It is. The four hours I played, I enjoyed for the most part. There are some really cool sequences in the game and the graphics are indeed great, but those are about the only positive things I can say about it. The gameplay is clunky and unfun. The scripted sequences glitch out consistently and don't work properly. And even something as simple as the inventory system is poorly designed and works in conflict with the original concept behind Resident Evil going back over a decade. It's too bad, it really is, because Resident Evil 7 and 2 were both fantastic, but Resident Evil 3 is painfully disappointing. But that's all from me. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like the video. I'll see you in the next video. I love you all. Peace out.